Hey my YouTube people, just keeping up on the same thread, working on this 2005 Subaru Outback XT with the 2.5 turbocharged engine. We have already taken off the accessory belts and the covers that go with those. Now we're going to move on to removing the radiator fans and the radiator. So this is going to be a standalone video where if all you're doing is you need to take out the radiator fans or the radiator, maybe one of your fans is um, spinning, you can hear it going ch -ch 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 it's usually the uh, bearing on the fan itself has started to go. So when it's spinning, it's kind of oscillating in and out and it's um, scratching a little bit. Or maybe one of your fans is totally dead. Or maybe your radiator got poked with something and it has a slow leak. You need to replace it. There's various reasons why you're going to be taking these out. Um, one of the ones for what I'm doing right now is a timing belt. It's not required to remove either of these. It is highly suggested at the minimum to remove the radiator fans. And then next suggested past that to remove the radiator to prevent any damage from happening to it during the timing belt install. So we are going to push forward on those. So step number one, we're going to be removing the reservoir. If you heard that click, I was putting it back in right here. There's a little thumb press and it presses that way. I can get a shot on that. Okay. Right there. So you press that in. And if you don't have fat fingers up in, it's a whole lot easier. There we go. So I had to pause that for a second, get this guy out. So that's loose. There's no bolts or screws that hold that in. You're going to pull this hose off of the T here. This is the T fitting of the uh, overflow system that feeds to and from the radiator into the reservoir and runs over into the turbo reservoir for coolant. This is a um, liquid and oil cooled turbo as well. There is coolant pumped down to an oil cooler for the system. So, you just pop this loose. If it's stuck a little bit, grab yourself some pliers. You can either use blunt nose or needle nose. Blunt, usually, blunt nose are usually better. Grab it on the fitting. Just give it a little twist back and forth. And then go just past the fitting. Pinch it and gently pull. It'll come free. It shouldn't have any clamps on it. This is just a non-pressurized barb fitting. And that will let you take this guy out got standing cooling in it set it somewhere stay upright you know I don't want to spill it um, and then we are going to move on to uh, the other side of this hose because when these fans come out this bracket is going to come with it um, because the bolts here hold the bracket in this is a metal T fitting it runs all the way over to here this is the return reservoir feed for overpressure from the um, turbo coolant system so, same thing here, bar fitting, no clamps. If it's stuck, grab with some pliers, give it a little twist, and pull it free. To keep that from leaking fluid, you can just take that and tuck it up around there, just under that hose. So I just got it tucked. You might hear a little dribble going on down there. I've got the radiator draining out right now. Um, and then we're also going to need to remove this hose from the radiator. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Grab that uh, clamp with our pliers. Scoot that back. Let's see if it's stuck. If it's stuck. So like I said, we're gonna grab it with our pliers. And give it a little turn. Okay. Should just slide free. Now there is gonna be some coolant that comes out of this. So there we go. We can just take this guy and kind of curl it up. Just tuck it back there. It's still at the high point. It shouldn't leak any coolant back there. Uh, we're also going to relieve this cap. We're going to leave it on there. We're going to open it. What that does is make so none of these hoses are trying to siphon fluid out from any residual pressure in the system. So that gets our main reservoir off. That gets our turbo reservoir disconnected. There are four bolts that hold in the radiator fans, one, two for the passenger side, and one, two for the driver side. These are 10 millimeter. Um, a short socket doesn't get in here really well behind this bar. I suggest a deep well socket. These guys can put it in deep. Uh, if you've just got a wrench uh, or only a short well, you know, make do with what you got, but I do suggest a deep well. What I'm gonna do now, um, because where I'm at, I'm going to loosen this cap. At this point, you don't need to loosen this cap yet. What you would do, had you not started draining the system yet, go down 
into the car. Right over here on the passenger side of the car, up on the radiator. Get a shot on that. There's a little fitting right there. It is a, a Phillips. Right up in there. That's coming out of. Fitting's not there anymore. Dumped into the coolant. I got it loose enough to where it would allow coolant to drain. Um, when you undo that, if you don't have the rest of the system unhooked, they won't dump coolant. So that's why you're leaving the cap on the top because it will keep some pressure against the system to keep it from siphoning the whole thing down. So you Phillips unthread that until the coolant starts coming out. Make sure you get the catch can in place. And then you'll go to the top. And like I said, you would come and loosen this cap. Easy to actually just take it off, set it aside. And that will relieve all of the uh, pressure control from the system you're going to have some residual vacuum pressure from the coolant cooling down when it stops being hot and some create a little vacuum in the system so you're basically relieving that pressure of what's holding the coolant in so all that's draining out so now i am going to work on taking the radiator fans out you undo two bolts for each fan i'm going to suggest you do the uh, uh driver's side first um, and on the bottom side can't you see it right there there's a clip for it on the back side of the clip on the front of the car side, there is one of those push tabs. You can see it, it's just one of those push tabs. It's oriented like this. Push that in at the back, pull it out, and the mount for it is actually on the fan, so it just stays on there. So we just set that aside. And in a moment, I'll have these fans off. So I got the fans off. Uh, one thing you need to do, disconnect this part of the hose on the top of that T. Should get the T out of the car. This is how it's oriented in the car. So it's just still connected right there. Pop that hose off. Four bolts off. That guy's aside. There's my passenger fan over there. I usually prefer just to keep passenger stuff on the passenger side of the car, driver stuff on the driver's side of the car. Some components are very obvious which side of the car they go on, but some are not. Uh, so if we're looking down here again, one thing I left out was the plug for this side. It's identical to the other side. The push pin faces the front of the car. The mount is on the fan itself. <clears throat> you just push it, pull it, done. So that's still draining out coolant. Um, what we're going to work on now is getting the mounts out for the radiator itself. Um, I'm also going to remove this mount to get it out of my way. So I'm going down for the timing belt. Uh, you don't have to remove this mount if you're just doing the radiator. I will suggest you go back, watch my video on the accessory belts. It will be very hard to get the driver's side um, fan assembly out without removing these belts and the cover that goes over them. When I had it coming out, I had one of the fins like in where this belt would be. That would be a struggle to do. Uh, for the other fan, I suggest running it down the bottom. From the bottom, they're just push inserts. Little rubber footing sits inside these. So you'll pick it up, look it out of those, angle it, and go down. And you should just barely clear the exhaust header here. And then, you know, obviously I'm draining coolant right now, but if that wasn't the way, it would have just dropped right down, set it down on that, and shoved out from under. So uh, these look like 12 mils. Let me double check that. Sorry, that's why I'm at 12 mils. Yep, so that's uh, 10 mil. Those are 12 mils. Let's get them off. And we're back at it. Just a reminder, I know for you it was moments ago. I'm taking this little uh, latch assembly connector that holds the stick for the hood in out because it's going to be in my way for the timing belt. So again, you don't need to take that out if you're just doing the radiator and fans. We've got both of our radiator mounts out. I took the time to undo the hose clamp on this. Just got some pliers or channel locks. Slide it back. Loosen this up. Pull it free. And by now, there shouldn't be any coolant left in this part of the system. And then you're going to need to do the same. Put the hose down here. It's got a clamp as well. It's a uh, clamp teeth right here. You go down below. Do the same thing at the top. And you want to wait to do that one until the radiator is basically completely drained out. Otherwise, that will dump coolant on you. Get a few squeezes, pump a little bit. Come back in a moment. Bam. There we go. Radiator. Got the bottom hose unhooked. It dumped a little coolant. I just got limited time to get at this one right now. So, ooh. Don't want to lose that. 
apologies. Uh, so I got that hose undone, dumped a little coolant. What I was able to do with that though is um, hold it up so coolant doesn't dump out of the engine as much. Pull the radiator out of its little grommet on the bottom, which is just a press fitting, pull it up. And then that let the other side drain out the rest of it faster. And that, ah, pretty much it, gents. Yeah, filming and uh, doing this at the same time, different kind of struggle. And you just pull it right out. Just to give you a better view, let's look down the bottom. It's just these little feet, and they just sit into a rubber grommet, so there's no bolts or washers or anything like that holding it in. Set that guy to the side. Preferably put something under that in case it leaks more if you're in a area where you're worried about contamination. Um, or set it somewhere where you're not worried about contamination. It's, coolant is the kind of stuff where you, you get it on your skin, you want to wash it off right away. It's extremely hazardous and toxic. Um, if you ever get it on your hands and you end up touching your face, you need to wash your face with cleanser. This stuff is pretty toxic. So, that's dribbling out a little bit still. Um, that's going to happen. I don't know how I can do about that. But that pretty much gets you, for just this video, radiator fans out, radiator out. Um, everything's just the reverse order. If you need reference on the accessory belts and the cover that goes over them, or the cover that goes over the engine, or the air intake that's right here, reference back to the video before this. And that's pretty much it for this part. I don't want to make one big, long video about doing the timing belt. Because, uh, one, you guys tend not to watch the whole thing, and I'm trying to make it easy for people to find components of like, hey, I just need to do this, hey, I just need to do this. Next up, we're going to be pulling out the uh, alternator um, and pulling off the uh, tensioner for the accessory or the AC belt, and then we're going to be working on getting the crank pulley off. So I'll see you guys in the next one.